When I started getting into building my home arcade, one of the things that really excited me was this idea of having a gaming kiosk. So if you remember back in the day, you'd go shop at a Toys R Us or even a Walmart, you'd see that they'd have like a GameCube kiosk set up or a PlayStation kiosk set up. And for me, that was something that I always thought would be so cool to have in my house. The problem, though, is if you look online to get one of these sorts of kiosks, you're looking at something like as low as 500, which usually means it's probably not a working condition, or even as high, I've seen in some cases, as $4,000, $5,000 to get one of these kiosks. So what I decided to do pretty early on when I started my little home arcade with my son was go ahead and look at the existing stuff that I had in my house, like old TVs and mounts for the wall and stuff like that, and then slowly assemble what I was really excited to do, which was a PlayStation kiosk. And a couple of years ago, those little PlayStation classics were going pretty cheap. So that, mixed with a couple accessories, I actually went ahead and put together my PlayStation Classic kiosk. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did that and some of the cool things that I put together with it right back here. One of my favorite gaming generations definitely had to be that N64 PlayStation era. So when I had set out to start building my classic home arcade and getting more retro stuff that unfortunately I had gotten rid of, it's not that I had a preference for PlayStation over N64, but what it was was that due to the PlayStation Classic not performing so well, I was able to pick up one of these off of Amazon, I believe, for like $30 brand new at the time anyways. So I picked one up and I started kind of tinkering around with it. So I love the idea of these classic mini consoles that they've been releasing. The downside, especially to the PlayStation Classic though, was that the original game selection didn't really do a whole lot for me. So I ended up going online and I looked up how to add more games to this and that's when I ended up discovering Retro Arc and Mod My Classic and basically without going, this isn't a how to video on how to mod, but basically I ended up putting a little bit of work into modding it and making it available for more games. So basically plugging in a USB stick with more games on it. That was kind of the start of this. But then I'd started building my home arcade and thought, okay, it would be awesome to have some of those classic gaming kiosks that I saw when I was a kid and remember fondly playing when I was in stores shopping, right? And I started looking some of them up thinking that maybe people were throwing them out or maybe I could find one cheap, but unfortunately that was not the case. So what I started doing was thinking, well maybe I'll just mount this PlayStation Classic to my wall and try to make my own. So that's exactly what I did. I ended up grabbing an old TV that I had that was barely getting used. I ended up figuring out how I could mount it to the wall with as cheap as possible. So I ended up finding an old wall mount inside my house um, and putting that together with this. And then I ended up slowly piecing it together. So if you look right here, this is an original picture of when I was putting it together way back when. Um, kind of the early stages. What I also went ahead and did though was... I spent, I believe it was $30, $40 on a PlayStation accessory kit because I wanted to make this feel more PlayStation than just having a Best Buy branded Insignia TV on my wall. So what I did was I bought this PlayStation accessory kit and it actually came with a couple PlayStation pins. The actual pin piece though to the PlayStation logo was small enough that I could jam it in to the speaker grill on this TV as you can see here. And then what I also did was to cover up the Insignia logo. Originally, I tried to, I believe I just like tried to use like some sort of um, like uh, paint remover to get rid of the Insignia logo. Unfortunately, I couldn't. So I ended up getting a strip of electric tape, putting it over top of that Insignia logo, running it across and cleaning it up, and now I have it all blacked out. To add some more touches because I wanted this to feel more like a PlayStation kiosk kind of in my own way that I remembered it, um, to the best of my ability anyways, 
I ended up going ahead and ordering off of Amazon a PlayStation light up logo to go on top of this TV. It's just a battery powered one that goes there. And then I used some of the original components from that PlayStation accessories kit, such as this controller holder and mounted it to the wall here beside the PlayStation. Now the PlayStation itself just held up with two-sided tape and for the past two years I believe that it's been up there it's still holding pretty well. So all in all, this this whole setup cost me about a hundred or so dollars to put together. So that includes the cost of the PlayStation Classic, the light up PlayStation logo that I have there and the PlayStation accessory kit as well as even the USB drive that's basically running all the modded games that are on here. So overall, it wasn't really too expensive, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I play this thing in waves. It's more or less for me. I love that old feeling of having a couple classic PlayStation games playing in the background. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.